this. Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 1,998 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Domain separation. This is where we go from the children's end of the pool to the adult side of the pool. And for those of you that have been working on ServiceNow for, I don't know, over five years now and have never touched a domain separated instance, I can tell you that it's a very humbling experience. So basically take all that you've known about uh, developing applications um, and anything that you've done in ServiceNow and we can make it exponentially harder, um, probably by a factor of 10, just because of the exponential possibilities for error um, due to the way domains are structured um, in ServiceNow, but also uh, domain separation is also apparent in other um, cloud applications or platforms out there too. So in order to get domain separated, uh, what we have to do is activate a plugin, kind of like any other application. And uh, what we're looking at here, when we type in domain um, in our picker here, uh, so our application navigator, excuse me. We'll find here we have domain admin um, as our application. Then we're gonna have our domains, our domain map, and our configuration. I'll go through each one of these uh, with a little bit of detail. Um, also for this series, I'm probably gonna do several videos because there is a lot to learn about domain separation. Um, also in my previous video, I saw that there was a comment um, that they liked, uh, the individual liked the domain separated aspect of doing the performance analytics and the dashboards. So I'm going to do probably videos on both um, performance analytics, but also domain separation. Um, since it is a topic that isn't really covered that often, and um, about a year or two ago, I did notice that there was an uptick um, in the need for developers who uh, ha have experience in domain separated environments. So uh, this is our domain list. And one thing, uh, well, there's a couple things that I want you to remember um, with um, domain separation. Number one, I'm an admin. So I break all the rules when it comes to domain separation, which means that I'm gonna have access um, to everything in, in this right here. This is our domain picker. So our domain picker is basically showing us um, kind of the structure here. I'm also gonna show you how to change it so it's searchable in a future video. But just remember that uh, if all else fails, I kind of have this rule and I can't find something, I go to global. Because global contains everything. And then after that, we start with our structure. And there's also another way to, to map this out. Um, and I'm gonna show you that in a second with our, with our domain map. So here we have uh, all the names of our domains. There's a couple that I've created. Um, we'll see here MCT, um, that we're gonna have customers I created and then Kingfisher, which is a separate account. This is what we call a whale account, and maybe we only want certain people touching this account. Um, I will show you uh, how it looks on the map in just a second. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, we have our descriptions here. Out of the box, what you're gonna find is that you have this MSP domain, I guess it's managed service provider. Um, this actually contains top even though there is a parent-child relationship here. So top is what we would call a primary domain. You see this true right here. So just make sure you remember this. You can only have one primary domain. So you can repeat that. You can only have one primary domain and that's it. Um, and then here we're gonna have our parent domains. So if we were to put one in, and we'll see here that top has no parent since it's the primary. Now, um, <laughs> it, we don't consider global the parent of top. It's just kind of out there. So if we take a look at our domain map, and I'll skip through these real quick. So this is kind of what our, this is exactly what our domain map looks like right now. So we have here uh, MCT is our corporation here. This was the mayor of Casa Tua, uh, one of the places, one of my favorite restaurants in Miami. And uh, the mayor is retired from politics. Now he's running a corporation. We call it MCT. So this is one domain here for all the mayor's customers. And then we have the Kingfisher, the whale account over here. 
um, which is kind of like privileged access. And I'm going to show you um, the differences later on and when we give someone access to this environment um, versus one of these, kind of what it looks like to them. So again, uh, I think I talked about this MSP one out of the box. It actually contains all the stuff here in top. So you're probably wondering why they would do that out of the box. Um, that's a great question. I'm assuming that they're figuring that you're probably going to put all your developers maybe in this MSP domain and then everything is going to trickle down from here. But um, the way I've done in my experience, uh, I've had developers working in here. So um, one thing I'm going to show you is how to put your, your admins in top. And also, uh, one of the things you always have to remember is that you have to check your domain picker because this thing will reset to whatever's in your profile. I'm going to show you that in a little bit, but rule of thumb is this. There's actually three rules. Number one, put your admins in top. Number two is never forget to put your admins in top. And number three is always remember to never forget to put your admins in top. Uh, it's going to prevent the creation of what we call overrides on what we call process tables. We'll get more into that. Maybe in this video I'll touch on a little bit, but probably in later videos I'll show you what overrides are. Um, they can be very frustrating to do developers, um, and, we'll sh and I'll show you how to um, basically clear out overrides in, in a future video or two. Okay, so this is our domain map, and let's see what happens if we try to create a second top domain, right? So a second primary. So we'll see here, we have our box checked as primary. I'm gonna put in top two here, and then we'll see it's contained by, I'm gonna do an insert and stay. Let's see what happens. Probably gonna mess this thing way up. Okay, so watch this, this thing wigs out, right? Domain hierarchy has changed, domain blah, 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 blah. Okay, record not found. So now if we go to our map, let's see what happens here. Okay, so it looks like we have here top, and I'm not even sure if it, it'll let me do this uh, with the second primary. So it looks like we have top here, but we can't find that top two that we just created. So now if I, and in fact it's not even showing here, so here, I'm going to try that again to really try to break the system. So I'm going to call it top two, I'm going to do primary, and I'm going to do a submit. There we go, that's, that's what I wanted here, duplicate entry, key name. Um, that's not really what I was looking for. So let's try top three. And let's do a submit here. Okay, it's been deleted or you'd have no longer access to read. Let's see if we can really break this thing. Okay, it looks like it's hanging in there. So now if I go to global, right? Because here, I can't find this thing. Looks like everything's there. Now if I go to global, we'll see if it let us insert that record or not. Okay, so it looks like top two, it allowed us to do two primary domains, but I'm going to get rid of this one because we can't have two primary ones here. And in fact, I'm going to change this to false. So of course, when I was trying this before, um, what happened? Basically, it, it broke the system. So just remember that you can only have one primary, even though I was able to do it there by doing an insert and stay. So let's see if I'm able to delete this thing now. Maybe I'll have to go into the record. Here's our confirmation coming up. It's probably thinking to itself, like, whoa, what are you doing here? Okay, let's delete this. And now we'll see that I'm in global right now. Is this thing gonna go or not? There we go. So here, I'll try it just one more time to see if I can make this thing break or not. Let's do it. Nope. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to type in, I'm going to call it Miami. I'm going to make a primary. I'm going to hit submit. It's changed. Okay, so now I'm in global. And it looks like it made this the primary now. And probably because I'm in global. Now if I'm in top, let's see what happens here. We can see top stuff and everything on down. Uh, but I don't think we can see Miami here. So just remember, you can't find it. Go into global. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to top and I'm going to refresh our map here. There we go. That's what I wanted. 
So cannot display domain map, primary domain, record not found. So basically what it's telling us here is like, hey, something's majorly wrong. So if you ever get this where your map's like totally blanked out, go to global. Chances are someone tried to create, they, they flipped that little primary to true on this one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make this one false. And now I'm gonna make this one true for top. All right, so now I am in, I'm gonna go back to top and now let's refresh this list. And sometimes it'll take a second for it to refresh the list because it has to run that business rule. So if you're changing the labels here, that's fine. You can change the labels all you want. Um, and it'll, it'll automatically change everything, which is cool. That's not a problem. What you wanna pay attention to um, is like domain path will also be um, important because uh, here you have um, unique values. So you could even name a domain. It's kind of like a, a sys ID, I guess, um, in a sense. And they've also added this domain code, which is um, something I'm curious about. I really haven't um, tinkered with this too much. But for right now, all we're gonna remember is our parent and our primary. All right, so now we spent enough time on trying to break the system. <laughs> so let's, uh, and, and I've seen it, um, broken a couple of times by accident one other thing i wanted to note was that all these things are not all these domains here they're not audited so when you go into a record here there's no related list for like versions um, or updates or anything like that and if we wanted to check that out we go to configure and related lists and we'll see if we have anything for versions or updates or anything like that because these are technically records. So this is all part of you know, your data structure. So if we go down here, I don't think there are any versions here. Nope, does not look like it at all. So again, that'll probably be another video. I'll set up maybe auditing for these things. Um, so that way we can keep track of who's doing what here. So at this point, I've added the edit to our contained by. I don't think I'm gonna use this MSP domain um, for my admins. So as you can see here, process flows down here, overrides from global process are done here. So they're saying, look, do the overrides here, um, I guess, in, in, or in top, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of this business of having MSP contain top. I just don't like that setup right there. I'm gonna have my admins work in top and so be it, that's the way it's gonna be. So now, one thing, and let's see here if I can re-add it, the contained by. Yeah, so if I want to re-add it, I'll just bring it back in there, not a problem. So as we can see here, domain map, um, I think we you know, showed enough or talked about this enough. So next thing we want to get to, and this is our configuration page. Now, why is this important? You probably won't go to this page that much, to be honest with you. If you want to change the domain table, meaning you want all your domains to be on a different list or something, um, you don't. I guess you don't have to have it there. You just create another table and then, you know, change this right here. Never done it before. Don't think I will. I'll take the out of the box. Thank you. Um, if I want to validate the hierarchy, this is just going. And sometimes, if you really get into a pinch, and someone messes something up with your domains, um, you open up maybe a high ticket, they might have you go through this just to validate that everything's okay. And now, let's say your security people come to you and say, well, I need to know like every table that uh, is domain separated, which basically has a sys domain field. So when they say, is it a domain separated table? Just say, okay, you know, does this, does this table have the sys domain field? So we're gonna bring it up. You know, click on this UI action here. It's gonna pop you out into a list like that. Look at that, you got 1,260 tables. Um, what do you wanna do with this? I don't know. Do you wanna do a, a chart? Probably not. You probably wanna export this thing um, via like Excel. And so that way, or maybe you just wanna like filter on the tables that are relevant. So that's another thing there um, with that. And now I need to get back to that page on here. All right, so let's open that page back up. 
All right. So then we have um, you know your domain progress workers, and then I've never unchecked this box. Um, don't recommend doing that. And then uh, delegated administration. Never mess with any of this stuff here. So. Um, and then this looks like uh, just our alerts that are that are coming in. Okay, so we've talked about those three things, <clears throat> those modules underneath the domain application. Now let's talk about users a little bit. So I think I told you that like my account, since I'm an admin, um, should be on top. Now, one thing I found is that in your user records, right? So we'll talk about Emily Jason in just a second, but now we're gonna talk about my account. So here's my account. Uh, when I go into it, which when I click into my account here, it's gonna require <clears throat> a company, um, or it should, yeah, right here. Here's our company, right? So I can put myself in Kingfisher, let's say, which it probably won't matter for me because I'm an admin and it breaks the rules anyway. One of the things that I wanted to show you though, if you really want to tell, if you want to keep your admin in a certain company, but you want them to be on top, one of the ways you can do that is you don't have to necessarily create a company um, that you know is in top or related to top. You can do that if you want. Maybe it's easier to do it that way. But you see this managed domain right here. So let's watch this. So see this, my domain automatically becomes um, top MCT customers. Now maybe I want to change that to top. Let's see if I can do it here. Now maybe it'll give me a problem since I put that company in there. It only let me do customers. Okay, so maybe what I'm going to do here is I want to try to break the system from the list. So now let's go into, let's see if I can bring this domain. And you know, one of the things that I think needs it a little bit of improvement here is that the domain field once you domain separate is not in any of the lists so that's kind of a pain in the butt because you're gonna want to look things up via domain so let's see if I can change this to top just have that stick yep there we go so now if I open up my record yeah, so it looks like I changed it there so even though my company um, is in uh, is Kingfisher, which technically is like a grandchild. Yeah, is it a grandchild? I guess it's a grandchild, or maybe a great grandchild um, of Top. Uh, I managed to make my managed domain Top. Now let's go ahead and reload this form. Let's see if this thing comes up. Great. Okay, so I don't have this even checked, but it'll still hold the value in there for domain. So. In essence, let's say I did want to make it customers, and I'll show you what that does. So I'm going to select customers here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to impersonate a user here in order to go back and forth, and we'll see what kind of default domain it gives me here. keeps me on top. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe I need to log out and then it'll, let's see if I can log out. Great. Okay. Let me log back in. And maybe it'll bring up customers here. Yeah. So this is what we're looking for. All right. So you see here how it automatically puts me in customers um, because that's the domain that was selected there. So the way to do it is basically, in my opinion, I mean, oh look, Miami's still there. Got to get rid of that thing. Okay, so the way to, to do it is to put your customers right here on top, or excuse me, your admins on top. Um, that way they'll always default there and they won't create overrides. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to my user record. Actually, I'm going to go back to the list view. We're going to refresh this list. And I'm going to change it here to top. And hopefully it will do that. Is it not playing nice with me? Sometimes it, it won't find that reference. Let's say no, you have to stick with these. So okay, how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna clear out our. Com I don't think we can even clear out our company here. Right, let's try doing it this way. 
Let's do a save. All right. Also, what domain am I in? That's probably why. I gotta go to the top to do it. And see how wonderful this, this uh, administrative effort is? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we have to remember here. What domain am I in? Always have to remember what domain you're in. All right, let's see. There we go. Now I can bring up top since I'm in the top domain. All right, so there's a little lesson for you on you know your admins and like how to keep them um, steered in the right direction. Sometimes your customers they're going to be really adamant that oh I want everyone in this company that's an admin or that works for us or something like that. So remember this manage domain, even though I don't have it checked right here, all this UI uh, policy does right here, it just opens up this box. But it, whatever, you have to be very careful. If you uncheck this box, it doesn't clear it. So make sure that if you do want it cleared, you put in a UI policy to clear that thing out. Um, so that way um, your, do your domain is, is empty there. Um, and it takes basically the, the company record for that domain. So if we take a look at Kingfisher as a company here, let's, let's drill into that real quick. And you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to create a domain and then we'll, we'll go through the whole motions here because all this stuff, so we're going to say, see here, Kingfisher is tied to that. That's why the customers was coming through, right? So now if I want to change this domain, let's see if I can do it here. Let's see if I can do Kingfisher. When I'm searching this thing, though, I might just go this way. Can I do it? I don't know. Now it's only going to let me do customers. So maybe I'm just going to save it like this. All right. So now it's going to assign a global one. Now I'm going to go in and put in Kingfisher. All right. Boom. So there we go. We got it now. All right. So kind of gone through that. We have a company here. We gave it a domain. Now let's let's take a look at that. I don't know if we can find that map again. Okay. So let's say that MCT maybe they got some financial stuff that they don't want every they don't even want like the admins to see. Well, the admins would be kind of impossible, but there is some functionality like that. I think with HR where they have like a specific role where like the um, only the people with that role can see like the salary data or something like that. Not even the admins can. Well, let's just say that people, whoever's working at MCT, um, we want to have a domain above MCT, a parent domain for MCT um, that not all these users can see. Like only a couple of the higher ups can see that. We'll call it like MCT Financial. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to go back to our domain list. All right. All right. So right now, what do I want to do? And you know what? I'm going to see if I can go find that. Let's see if I can find this Miami domain and just kill it. All right, here's the Miami domain, but here's a little trick that I'm going to do. I want to pop up the global when I kill this thing. All right, so primary, nope. Let's delete it. All right, let's see if delete comes up. If not, is it coming? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Excellent. Hopefully it'll kill this thing off. All right, looks like it did. So I think I said this in the beginning, though, that like with certain, there are certain things that you have to be in global to do. And I'll get into that in future videos. Now, you're probably saying, well, Miami's still there. What's going on? I think I just got to refresh my browser. And it should go away. Let's see if it does. Come on now. Oh, Miami's still there. It doesn't want to go away. So I'll have to take a look at that later and see what, what I did to break the system, so to speak. Okay. But, yeah, rule on that one. Primary domain. There's only one. All right. So let's get into our user here, which was what? Emily Jason. Okay. So Emily here. Oh, I wrote a note. I till. Don't forget. So I have a user here who she's in, let's see here, three groups. She's in MCT and she's in the Aspen Now test group. Um, so she should be able to see, you know, let's see what's going on in that MCT group. And one thing we'll notice, oh, and here's a great question for you. So with this domain picker thing, do you have to be an admin? 
to see the domain picker? No, you do not have to be. Now, um, because we're going to have people work in the service desk that need to create incident tickets in different domains, so they're going to have to be able to navigate using this picker. Now, if I give a user ITIL admin, will they be able to see the domain picker? So let's just take a look at Emily, Emily's role here. And uh, let's see if she's got, she's got ITIL admin, but she doesn't have ITIL. So I think this would be a great test question um, that's out there. Like, what role do you need to see the domain picker? Um, so let's go ahead and impersonate her. And first off, I want to show you in here where you see the domain picker. You'll notice here, it's in general, right? And we could even change it from here and all that stuff. But generally, you want to have it right here where you can see it, kind of like our, our update set picker. It's not in developer, which tells us what? It's not only for developers. So um, that's one thing to note there. Now, if we go in and impersonate a user like Emily. All right. All right, let's go into her gear shift. Aha, we don't see it. She has ITIL admin. Shouldn't she have everything that ITIL does? Apparently not. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back to Emily's profile here. We'll notice I'm in top, great. All right, now, I'm going to hit edit. Yeah, sure, I wanna leave. Now I'm gonna go find ITIL. No, I don't wanna save her password, all right. Let's hit save. All right, great. And one thing I wanted to stress about domain separation, one thing that is critical is that if you are building something as an admin, you have to remember that impersonation is gonna be really important because you wanna be able to see what the user sees. If you're an admin, you can see everything. So of course everything is gonna work for you. But you have to make sure that every, all the work that you do, especially if it's on top, that it goes all the way down to whatever domain um, that you want it to affect. And if it doesn't, then you're going to have to take a second look at that. So if you're not familiar with that concept, just remember that little impersonation is going to be very important. Whenever people test, you have to have them test as a user that has access to that domain and will be working in that domain. All right, so no, I don't want her to impersonate. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to hit the gear shift. There we go. So let's see what domains does she have. She has all three of these domains, Emily does. All right, now we're gonna show her domain picker in the header. Great. So why does she have access to all three? Well, you remember our map here? Look, MCT, customers, Kingfisher. Well, okay. Um, so she gets access to data in here, here, and here. But, you know, maybe here's the thing, like, maybe we don't want Emily to, to be working all this stuff. Maybe it's too much workload for her. And maybe we just want her work in the Kingfisher account. So what are we going to do then? Um, or even better, here, here's one that um, has come up in my experience. I want her just to see customers and Kingfisher, but I don't want her to see anything in MCT. Typically, what people will do is they'll throw her in MCT but then later on they'll realize that she can see everything. So, um, in fact, let's go and make, while she's, um, while she has access to all three, let's go ahead and make like three tickets here, um, incident tickets real quick with each different domain. So let's go to incident dot do. Now let's take a look at the form here and see if we have domain on here. We don't have domain on here. We didn't add it to this, this form. Um, so what does that mean? Whatever's here is gonna go. Now later on, we'll show you how to, to do it so that way, you know, the user can select the domain. Sure, without using the picker, because that's been, in my experience, one of the things that's come up. Well, we don't want them to use the picker or whatever. And of course here I have the company read only. Great, way, you know, yay me, I forgot to, <laughs> forgot to take this thing out of list. So sorry about that, folks. Let me go ahead and swap that out. Let's get rid of the company on the form because it's obviously mandatory. So let's go to incident uh, dot do. 
And I'm going to get rid of that thing. And in fact, maybe I'll do that now. I'll throw domain on there now. Instead of company. Let's go form layout. And let's get rid of uh, those collar.company of all things. Alright, so what do I want to do here? Domain. Sure. Let's throw the old domain on there. I really don't want to bring it all the way up. Alright, let's try. I just want to do it. Come on, I want you to go right there. There we go. Alright. <clears throat> Okay, all right, now look, we just created something called an override. So I'll show you a little bit about overrides later on, but basically, because we're on top, like when you start out in domain separation, everything is gonna be in global. So whenever you made an adjustment to a form, to a form somewhere lower, um, it's gonna create what we call an override. Later on, and you're gonna probably create lots of overrides by accident, and you're gonna pull your hair out trying to find these things. But uh, Jason's going to show you how to um, how to clear these overrides here. So let's go ahead and impersonate. Let's go back to Emily. All right, we'll see she's an MCT here. And now let's go back to our new record for incident. All right, it still wants... Oh, I see why. Because, see, now here's a great example. So we're in top MCT chances are that there might be something going on on this form here in this domain let's see if I change the customers if it's different probably is not why because uh, these two are children so yeah, you can see how time-consuming this is now maybe maybe I did this on purpose right just to show you like a little bit about overrides let's go back to our incident new record and now let's go down to the top MCT let's see aha uh -huh. See, yeah, look at that. See how that changed the form? All right, we're gonna get that sucker out of there. All right, so let's get a form layout. And this will be a lot of your day if you're working in domain separation, is trying to figure out, okay, so like where, where did the form change and all that stuff. All right, so now let's put our domain in there. And now let's see, okay. Good stuff. So we got top MCT. Now let's impersonate Emily just one more time. So I apologize for the length of this video. However, I think that we've seen a lot of good behavior here or adverse behavior that we'll need to overcome um, in future videos. So here we go. Top MCT. Now if I change just the customers, let's see what happens. It's going to refresh the screen. It's going to put in uh, MCT customers. If we put in Kingfisher... And it's going to be Kingfisher. Now, can they change this? Certainly. They want to change this? No problem. Now, let's see what's in the picker here for them to pick. So, here's change, just Kingfisher. Now, let's see if I go up to MCT, what happens? Let's see what's available there. Reload. The, come on, you can reload. Let's see what's available. See, all three are, because this is the parent right here. So, see how that works? All right. And now uh, we'll see what happens with visibility domains. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Emily out of this one. And I'm going to put her in Kingfisher and then give her visibility to customers. So we'll note that we'll note that in a second. So first we're going to create one called customers. Um, or excuse me, in the customers domain. And then I'm just going to type in here customers domain. And we're going to hit uh, save. All right, we'll see two seven. Then we're going to go to a new record again. We'll make one an MCT. Uh, let's see here. MCT domain. Let's hit submit. So let's go to a new record. And now what have we got left? Of course, the Kingfisher account. Who could forget about that? There it goes, Kingfisher. All right, KF domain. And I want to hit submit. Now, if Emily goes to incident.list, or the uh, incident application, or whatever you want to call it, all right, so here we got our numbers. What do we want to see here? 2727. 
All right, so what do we want to do here? We want to put in, so we see these three here, right? So, we're going to go to put in a domain. And again, out of the box, you're not going to have the domain tag here. So you have to add it for every table, which is a pain in the butt. Um, so now we're going to see all these that are global. I don't care about these. We're going to filter them out. And it uh, looks like some of these, some of these um, have been created too, so it's kind of cool. Um, so at this point, she has access to all this stuff. So now what are we going to do? We're going to say, look, we just want Emily working the Kingfisher account, but she needs to have access to customers also, so that way she can go back and forth. But we don't want her having access to um, the stuff that's happening there in um, MCT. So here, now you see that? Look, it took over and it said, I want to be an MCT. I want to be on top though. So make sure you're careful with that too. One thing that if you're working in a million tabs like I am, I'll tell you what happens is this. You'll be in a record like this and then you're gonna change your domain or maybe your domain, like I said, I wanna keep myself in top, but let's say my domain um, was like MCT because that's what you know management is like, you gotta be an MCT, but it'll flip back over a certain amount of time to MCT. Then what I'll do is I'll create a, a business rule or something like that, and then automatically I've created what's called an override. Then I have to go back, clear that thing out, and then I got to start over again, which can be a real pain. And a lot of people would say, well, you know, you shouldn't be hitting like control, you know, click or whatever it is you're doing to come into this type of screen. Well, I say to those same people, look, if you're in a form uh, like this right here, and you hit configure form layout um, is there any way to see a domain picker no you can't see anything you can't see any of the, you can't see the updates to the picker from this screen um, you can't see the domain picker so this could be a mistake waiting to happen right here because the domain resets so um, if you come up with a solution to put in the update set picker and the domain picker and all these screens um, that would be very helpful so uh, but here, you know, in that type of screen, it's almost impossible. So now we're going to go to Emily's profile. And let's see here. Here's our group, MCT. So we'll see here her company's MCT. Um, what we want to do is we're going to, we want to put Emily, we're going to pull her out of MCT. And let's see if we have... So we do have a company called Kingfisher. Great. And I'm going to put a user. I want to put her in here. All right. So I'm going to go to her profile and do it this way then. Since I don't want to. Let's reload this. And I'll see if she's in two groups at edit. All right. So now what do we want to do? We want to put her in Kingfisher, right? It doesn't see, oh, there's probably not a group created. So good, let's create a group for King Fisher then. Continue. All right, so I'm gonna make it King Fisher. And you know what? I wanna make Emily the manager because she just got a promotion anyway. Great. And then the company, it's gonna be King Fisher. Now I'm gonna hit save. All right, now I'm going to throw her into this group. Uh, does it not see her? Uh, probably because she's the manager. All right, let's see. Let's see if I clear this out. I'm curious about this now. I hit save. find her. Really, it's not finding her. Hmm. Interesting. So here we have our company. Let's, let's take a look here at 
that. That's probably what I'll do on her record. Just make her company. Instead of making it MCT. Let's see if I can make a Kingfisher. There we go. Okay, excellent. So we set it up that way. And let's see if we can find Kingfisher on the list here now. There we go. All right, as you can see here, domain separation can cause you a lot of heartburn and trying to get this stuff working. <laughs> All right, so now she'll see stuff in Kingfisher. We'll see what her managed domain is. So it's Kingfisher. Okay, so let's set it up. So let's go ahead and impersonate her. And we'll go directly to incidents. And let's see what's in her. Uh, so see here how her domain picker changed. So now let's go to her incidents. And now what do we see? Anything that's in global, right? Because global, everything is out there. All right, and then we have Kingfisher. So let's filter out all the global stuff. And Kingfisher is the only one that we see that's that's not empty, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? She needs to see what's going on in customers. So let's see how we can do this. Let's go to, that's our company. We don't really care about that. That's another company from MCT. Here's our group. Okay, so now we could do this for the group. Um, probably easier to do it for the group um, than it would be for um, an, a, you know, a user by user basis, right? Because that's usually the way these things work. So let's go to our visibility domains here. Let's see if we can get customers up here. Of course, it just wants to show us Kingfisher. So let's see if I can pop into global and see everything. If not, then I'll have to save this for another video sometimes. And that's what will happen. It will just show you that one, one selection <laughs> for whatever reason. So that way you can't get your visibility domains going here. All right. So now I'm going to pop this back down to top. All right. So let's see here. Oh, one thing it did also for MCT when I took... Uh, it looks like it deleted for Emily, you know, this, uh, the group, and then, you know, all, all this. So uh, get accustomed to these business rules running, and it's going to tell you what's happening. And sometimes people just flick right through them, but try to understand what's happening in each one of these things here. So let's see if we can get, um, let's see here. Let's toggle our scope a little bit. Oh, yay. All right, so we toggled our scope. So let's try to reload our form. Now let's edit our visibility domains. Will that do it? No, it won't. It only lets in Kingfisher for whatever reason. So, so she's already been granted because that's her company. So if we want to do, maybe we can toggle it again. See if that'll affect our, our list here. I'm gonna do it. There we go. Okay. So at this point, we want to put her in customers. Get away, Cisco. All right. So now we have her in customers. And what a toggling the domain scope means. It means that you expand your do your domain so that way you can do uh, different things like this, right? So just remember that you have that in your menu right there, the toggle the domain scope. So now let's go and see what Emily can see. All right, so Kingfisher and customers, voila, there we go. So there we have two sibling domains. She can see this one and she can see this one and she can't see anything in here. So it's kind of a pain to set up but we got it going, didn't we? So now let's go to incidents. And voila, we have our one from customers here. We can even take out one from global. So that way she won't see anything that's going on in MCT. So we have that, that data segregation there, um, just like we wanted. Okay, so I think that's a good overview for right now, enough to get you started with domain separation. Like I said, there'll probably be a couple of videos uh, coming forward and I don't know, next couple of weeks that you have to look forward to. 
and I'll probably and I guarantee you they'll be shorter than this one but there is a lot to absorb here and like I said uh, you know how many years you've been in service now when you go into domain separation kind of irrelevant because there's a lot of stuff here that's going on that you're not used to dealing with when you're a single uh, in a single tenant instance so as I like to say you know this is where um, you develop from a child into a real adult um, start swimming in the adult side of the pool so my name is Jason Miller founder of Aspen Now Solutions and we just unlocked the power of ServiceNow